Okay, folks, I'm back with you here in the middle of, what is this, 3rd or 4th of February. Uh, it's been a horrible winter in the Ozarks. Every winter is horrible when you can't get out and ride, right? But anyhow, I'm in the garage today. I've bought a new uh, uh, Kawasaki Versus 1000 that I'm going to be running around on a little bit this summer. And uh, the bike's geared a little high, or a little low to suit me. Um, the motor at, at 65 miles an hour, the motor right now is turning 4,000 RPM. And uh, I've got a long trip I'm going to take on it this year. I just don't want to buzz it that tight. The motor's got plenty of low end grunt, and I think it can take a little higher gear in the back. So today we're going to change the final, the, the sprockets, the front and rear both. Uh, we're going to put a set of JT sprockets here that I've got for it and uh, the bike stock has uh, whoop, let me get my notes here the bike stock has uh, a 15 tooth front sprocket a 43 tooth rear sprocket which gives it a uh, a final gear ratio of 2.86 to 1 and I'm gonna put on a 16 tooth front sprocket and a 42 tooth rear sprocket. So I'm gonna change it from, uh, I'm gonna add a tooth on the front and go with one less on the back, which will give me a final ratio of 2.62. So we'll go from a 286 to a 262 final drive. And the best as I can calculate with my rudimentary, rudimentary with my lack of math skills, the best I can calculate, I should drop 350 or 360 RPM in sixth gear. So we'll see how that works out. I can check it and see what it, uh, see how much RPM it drops at 65 mile an hour indicated. And hopefully, I think it'll probably just about get the uh, speedometer back in calibration because they're always show they always show fast on the metric bikes and uh, that should be enough change there to get it pretty well lined back up we'll check it with the gps um what else are we gonna do that's about it on that uh we're in the garage here i've got the fjr sitting over here on life support waiting for spring with the battery tender on it and the old bobber sitting over here it's on life support as well it's waiting on spring and i'm piddling around in the garage so we'll get set up and start taking that front sprocket loose and uh, if you enjoy watching paint dry you might enjoy this video i don't know okay kind of got a close-up going on here I've taken off the front cover here on the front sprocket. Um, yep, sleeves are falling out of it. The gear shift linkage had to come off in order to for the cover to come off over it. So I took that off. So now we've got our sprocket exposed here. And you can see there's a washer behind it and it's folded up right here to keep the nut from backing off. So we're going to ping this back out and then we're going to use an impact on this nut. You want to make sure your bike's in neutral so you're not uh, going to do any damage to your shift forks. You don't want to force it. So put the bike in neutral, get the uh, washer cleared from the nut, use an impact and what I'll do is sit on the bike and uh, hold the rear brake and then use the impact and knock this loose. Okay, so now we're going to knock this washer back so we, we can get the nut to come off. And uh, I don't have a cool tool for this. I don't have a, a punch handy that I could use to do this. So We're just going to be crude about it. 
try not to cut the washer. I'm going to reuse it. There it goes. All right. I don't know if that's a 36 or a 2 or a 4 or what it is, but I'll be right back with the correct socket. Okay, I'm on the bike. I'm holding the rear brake. It's in neutral. Let's see if we can buzz this off. This was a 27 millimeter. This isn't good. Here we go. All right, we've gone from a half inch drive impact to a three quarter. Let's see if that'll do it. All right, well, finally, I got that loose. Come on, baby. You know where it's at. There it is, isn't it? I ended up using a breakover bar and a socket, and I ran a handle of a <laughs> of a pickaxe through the through the wheel rear rear wheel there to hold it, and I wound up putting a pipe on the on the uh, breakover bar to get enough leverage. My impact would have done it. I just don't have enough air to run it. I got a little cheap Harbor Freight single piston compressor and it just doesn't have the the oomph to make them impacts work. So anyhow, we got the nut broke loose. Let's see if we can get the uh, rear wheel loosened up and maybe we can get that front sprocket off. Okay. Let's see if they have any better luck with this axle nut than we did with that. Oh yeah, that's quite a bit easier. Loosen that up a little bit, I guess I... Run this adjuster forward, give us all the slack we can get out of this. It's a new chain, new sprockets, so there's not a whole lot of forward slack that I can go here. Which is concerning to me, I'm afraid my chain may wind up being too short. I think the difference in the sprocket size, the, the small sprocket's going to be, yeah, there's not a lot there. All right, I removed the caliper, the brake caliper off the other side and pushed the axle out and uh, slid the wheel forward, got the chain off the rear sprocket. So now, that should slip right off. And hopefully we've got enough room here to, uh, I'm gonna get my chain in the dirt here, but hopefully, yep, that'll come out. All right. So there is our original 15 tooth sprocket. And it looks like the sprocket is offset. It's a little deeper. Yeah, no, it's not either. It's about flush. All right. This one's marked outside. I don't know if you can see it there, but it's marked outside. The new one will just generally the the marked side of the uh, sprocket will go to the outside where you can read it. So, like a yay, 
you can see the difference in the size there of those. So that's going to eat up some chain length, but my rear sprocket's going to be a little smaller. So, hopefully. Nice tight on the, th on the splines, that's what we want. I'm going to go ahead right now and put some molly, some high uh, pressure molly grease on these threads. Uh, you always want to use a high pressure molly grease anytime you're dealing with splines. Anything that's going on a spline, you want to you want to put some molly grease on it. It'll pr give you some protection there. I don't think we're going to beat those splines out with this sprocket for a long time. They're tighter than the original OEM. Sprocket splines were. You never want to buy a cheap on your sprockets. Never buy cheap sprockets. Those on a cheap sprocket, these splines will be your brand new gear, brand new shaft you put on there, and it'll, you'll have back and forth. They won't be tight. Well, that sprocket will just work on those splines and wear it out in no time. Then you're going to end up having to change the the output shaft on your transmission when those splines are worn too much. So buy the good stuff. There's not that much difference. This is like a $23 or $4 sprocket. And I saw some $12, $13 sprockets on Amazon. Some no-name stuff. S stick with the, the good brand name stuff and you, you'll be a lot better off. JT makes a lot of sprockets for OEM uh, companies. They're, they make good stuff. So you can't go, I don't think you'll go wrong with them. Let's see if we can get this guy on here. I would have went with the OEM. They didn't, uh, Yama, or Kawasaki didn't offer a 16 tooth sprocket for this, so they have a lot of choice. Oh man, I got grease in there and I can't see the line there. Splines up. There it is. All right. that on. If you look at that, you'll see that the splines on the shaft stick through the gear. And you probably can't see that. You can see that the, the splines stick all the way through right here. They come through. And on your nut, well, of course, you got to put your washer, so that gives uh, room for the washer, but you still see even with the washer on, the splines are coming through, right? So you're thinking, well, how's the nut going to clamp down on the sprocket to hold it? When you look at the nut, you can see that it's it's got a recessed area in it for those to give room for those splines. Uh, hopefully, that's in focus. See that recessed area? Those splines, that'll cover the splines. The outside of the nut out here still has plenty of room to uh, clamp against that sprocket and hold it in place. Let me get out of the way where you can see. Put our nut back on. I'm not going to tighten that right now because I don't know if my chain's going to be long enough this is even going to work. So, trying to kind of see, it looks like I need to move my, washer there to make it all, that'll probably be about right when it's tight. So I'm just going to put that on like that for now, and then we'll try to get this back wheel in. And we're gonna change the let's see, we gotta change the sprocket on the on the wheel next. Okay. So now I'm just gonna buzz these uh, nuts off this sprocket with an impact. I say I am. Yeah, I think we'll be alright. Have a look at 
this sprocket here, I see it's flat on the back. There's no recess. It just mates flat. And then it's got a slight recess here on the front. So, get our new sprocket. This is our JT sprocket. And there is a size difference. You can see here in the sprocket. So I may be all right on that chain. That's going to make a big difference. It's quite a bit smaller. Cool, cool. I wasn't wanting to buy a new chain. And again, flat on the back here on this JT sprocket. And then it's got the recess on the front. It's also marked on the front. Alright, looks like the, the torque spec on these are 44 pounds. 44 foot pounds. Okay, you want to torque these in, in a star pattern. One here, and then go straight across to here, and then you can go back over next to that one. Try to pull that sprocket down without warping it. Well, now we gotta try to get that rear wheel back on. I'm gonna try to get this rear wheel back in. I've greased the uh, spacers where they're running the seals. So hopefully that'll keep that happy. So now we'll see if we can get this chain on. All right. We got all kinds of adjustment room. That's about where it was when we started right there. So that's real good. That's good news. A little bit of grease on those threads. Don't want to have any problems there. According to the specs, I'm supposed to have one inch of slide right here. Pretty close right there, about an inch. Alright. Now we've got to set the uh, alignment of the sprocket. You want this sprocket to be in line with the front sprocket. Uh, you do that over here on this side, you can turn this back and forth and change the alignment of this sprocket. And it's it's imperative that they run in line. If they're if they're out of line, if this is turned, it's not in line with this one, it's gonna wear your chain and your sprocket pretty quick. And it's not good. So the factory puts these blocks that are marked and you got the little hashes here in your frame. Totally worthless, don't use it, don't pay any attention to it. If you line it up, like the second hash here and the second hash on the other side, I'll pretty well guarantee you, to you that your sprockets are not going to be in alignment. So we got a tool for that. Basically, you just clamp it onto your sprocket. Clamps right over the top. It's got a pointer that runs up the chain and you can just visually see If you're, you can see if your sprocket is in alignment with your chain. Right now, it's not. The front, the my uh, pointer is pointing out this way, so I need to move the other the other side of the wheel forward. Or, I'm sorry, back. 
We need to pull it back a little bit to line it up. Now my tool, my pointer, is it right in line with the chain as it runs right in line with the chain, which tells me that this sprocket is in line with that sprocket. And my chain won't be trying to run off this either side of the sprocket because it's, it's straight with the other one. So now I can lock down my adjusters and set my axle nut. Okay. I like the alignment. We're going to go ahead and torque the rear nut. The book says 81. I think I'm there. Alright. Got that back installed. Runs freely, nice and smooth. Got my inch of free play there. Okay, we've got the axle nut left to torque here, and then we'll bend the uh, stake it down with that washer, and that'll be the worst of it. The rest of it just covers. I'm going to try it by sitting up here on the bike with putting all the pressure I can on the rear brake. Getting on the nut here with my torque wrench. It's set to 108 pounds. Let's see what I can do here. Okay. Looks like I had it there pretty close. All right, I believe we've got it. Put the brake caliper back on there before I could uh, do that. So I went ahead and did that. Now I need to stake over this uh, washer, hold that nut in place. There's one other thing I wanted to show you there that I didn't mention earlier. This is the uh, gear shift, the shift shaft with the collar that slips over with the linkage that goes to the uh, foot, um, to your foot shifter there. That thing's got a pip on the end of that shaft if you can see it. And that goes in the slot. So when you put that back on, you know where to put it. You can see the pit mark right there below the slot. So that lets you know how it was put on originally. And that's the way I put mine back. So my, my uh, shift lever, the orientation didn't change on it. It's back where it was. All right, that's all. Okay, folks. That about wraps it up for the sprocket change on the Versus 1000 today. That's the way a hillbilly does it. I hope I didn't put too many folks to sleep, and if I did, I hope you all slept well. And uh, when the weather becomes fitting, we'll take it out for a test drive and see what the change in the uh, RPM is at 65 miles an hour. See if I'm going to like it. Well, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.